Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're talking about news stories that's happened in the last week since the last news pod. And we're starting with a fun article about five reasons why we're not bummed that Houston is not getting a Hyperloop. And this is from 817. The reason why I'm showing you this is just it brings up a lot of interesting points. First, we don't know how much it'll cost. Um, we've already got bullet train plans in Texas, you know, from Houston to Dallas. Um, there might not even be a need to go to Dallas. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, safety, which is always a concern for any mode of transport. And we'll get it eventually, which I think is kind of funny because if it does happen, um, it'll be pretty hard to leave Houston and beating the heart of the petrochemical industry, one of the largest ports in the city. So if Hyperloop works, we'll get it. I thought that was just kind of fun. Next, we're going on to The Verge. This article is Virgin Hyperloop One will build a $500 million research center in a tiny Spanish city. Um, again, this happened uh, August 7th, and I think it just kind of goes into a fun kind of how Hyperloop One has picked this small Spanish city in the south of Spain. Um, the center is an R&D center, so there won't be any test track and there are testing components, and it'll be completed in 2020. Next, uh, we're talking about lobbyists. So this is in Washington, D.C., in the United States. Hyperloop One, of course, has hired lobbyists in the past, to have, as have other Hyperloop companies, but I thought it was just interesting um, to hear that while um, you know, there are projects going on in the United States for Virgin Hyperloop One. Uh, they do want a presence on Capitol Hill. And this is kind of a known thing that's happened for all of these different transportation companies. The next one is that Virgin Hyperloop One is, you know, opening its first office in Dubai. I think this article kind of puts a good spin on uh, why exactly, gives a lot of good background. Um, and Basically, it, it, I really like these couple paragraphs of you know, where the um, first couple Hyperloop lines in Dubai might be going and stations. And uh, this is nothing too um, you know, earth-shattering news, so this is, but this was just a good article that summed up everything. Next, version Hyperloop 1, um, again, you know, opening up their office in Dubai and you know, we don't really know of a timeline. Again, it tells, you know, why they're starting it um, because of the routes and stuff. But it goes into a little bit about other companies, about like HTT, um, are also looking at the same kind of um, regions. And um, this one talks a little bit more about HTT and a 10 kilometer Hyperloop track um, in a city in southwest, southwestern Guangzhou province. Um, so that brings me to Slovakia and HTT. And after kind of a feasibility study, this article, which is really good and I'd highly recommend you read it, um, goes out about speaking of you know how they went about signing MOUs with ministries. And after those eight, eight months of the MOU in action, you know, things kind of faltered. But then HTT is now looking at France and you know building a test center in Toulouse um, France and you know so it's just kind of interesting how it's kind of morphed um, as the years progress finally Chicago is um, and the non kind of hyperloop company the boring company which is on skates which is not classic hyperloop um, you know, there's a lot of interest in this route because it's from Chicago Hare Airport downtown um, and just kind of, you know, what the status is of this and, you know, when will this be done and just a lot of questions kind of around where that's at right now. And another route that is um, kind of, you know, wondering what the status is, it's in Colorado. Um, the Hyperloop study with um, the Department of Transportation and Virgin Hyperloop One is in phase two. They're reaching out to stakeholders and kind of figuring out how um, 
this route will impact uh, different stakeholders. They've already looked at the engineering and um, we don't know much about this, but they've already looked at the engineering side of things and now they're looking at kind of the stakeholder and soft policy side of things and that's an interesting render of a possible underground Hyperloop station near the International Airport. And speaking of Virgin Hyperloop 1 again, um, we're going back and you know, this is about Texas and, you know, how it might impact Texas. And Texas, uh, this article points out that there's a Mobility 2045 plan that still heavily relies on car transportation. Um, however, you know, they still have to think about the future and different ways and different modes of, you know, getting around for the future in 2045. Uh, which isn't that far away. It's only 20 some odd years away. And that brings me to just keeping in touch. I want you to follow our Twitter handle in the Hyperloop because we have two lists, one of a Hyperloop companies and one of SpaceX Hyperloop teams that are competing in the Hyperloop pod competition at SpaceX. This first one, you get to see all the updates like TransPod is having more conferences um, coming up so you can sign up for that. Hyperloop Poland's released some more information on um, their group taking part in different uh, meetings and um, even Virgin Hyperloop 1 retweeted a St. Louis Regional Chamber which I inter did an interview with um, how they're still considering that route and corridor and how that would be beneficial for the region. Um, Transpod again tweeting about their um, different uh, plans in France and uh, in a city called Limoges and just how a Hyperloop will be um, in, in France and in Europe and how testing will go on about that. Um, and so I'd highly recommend you follow this and Zeleros, the other Spanish team that's partnered with HyperPoland and Transpod and um, the Dutch group uh, Hart and how they're trying to create um, a standardization for Hyperloop in Europe. So I'd highly recommend you follow that Twitter list. And now going back to the SpaceX pod competition teams, these teams are already in full tilt recruit mode as the new college uh, university year starts. Um, we see a lot of information setting, informational um, meetings happen and a lot of good, you know, push for these different teams to recruit students again um, and you know build excitement for a new year and uh, also you know summarizing what happened uh, this last year with their pod and I'd highly recommend so you also have our loop which is a former um, university team and they're doing some interesting work uh, with their engineering plans on uh, you know fundraising for future engineering plans so I'd highly recommend you follow with that and the last bit of news is just a interesting perspective of why these college students um, still participate in the Hyperloop pod competition and why they really believe um, that working on these te technology projects will be important for getting new skills but also shaping the future so I'd highly recommend you check out this um, article from HyperEd Engineer. And that concludes it from In the Hyperloop. Stay tuned, subscribe, and stay in the loop.